you like music? Music? You call that music? Boy, Get me out of that. Well, they well. should make that law stick. People would say, no, we saved it. And we were and we made it. And we got the right to do it. With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero. Dearest, dearest, I whisper prettily under thee. Thou art solid murder, what a kick thou givest me. When I'm sentimental, dost thou dig my jive? I feel the lamp and gentle. Is it that my Because the joke crash goes a thunderbolt. Is that just like love? Straight is your path and firm is your step. And then at the drop of a glove. Where is south, which is north, bang, it's July the 4th. Is that just like love? Isn't it odd to walk up to a dream and say, don't I know you? Isn't it weird to hear miracles talk and say, well, how do you do? Clear is your mind and strong is your will. A mountain is simple to show. Then the ground falls apart, boom goes your apple cart. Isn't that just love, love? <laughs> Colorado Springs The Way It Was is a program produced by the Pikes Peak Library District that looks back at the history of this region through old films. If you have an older film that features the history of this area you would like shown on Channel 17, please call 531-6333, extension 1170. Hi, my name is Steve Antonuccio. I'm the Video Center Manager for the Pikes Peak Library District. I'd like to welcome you to the special edition of Colorado Springs the way it was. It is my great pleasure to introduce Lou Tilly, our guest today. And uh, I don't know any other way to describe Lou but to call him a Renaissance man. And Well, my love for Renaissance painting must have something to do with that, you know. I. Uh, I certainly, in the time I have spent in Italy, have tried to, uh, shall I say, pattern my, uh, my paintings upon Italian paintings. But I also, uh, it's all the, today is especially wonderful for a person that has multiple interests. Well, I was going to say, and back I've then you could not get involved in photography no, and filmmaking no. and uh, art and computer art now. Computer I guess you've been doing that well. lately. So yep, you've, indeed. you've always been involved in learning the, the new technologies. And so well, they're irresistible to me because they always act as an excuse as to why I do something lousy. Oh, well, it's because the technique, <laughs> you know, I haven't been able to do it. But uh, no, I have had a, a sympathy for different things that, uh, such as photography and the, the beauty of the darkroom work that you do with it. And well, let's, let's go back. Cameras. Let's talk a little bit about um, your background, where you're from, and how you started, uh, started getting involved in art. Well, the, uh, in my recent exhibition that I had a, uh, from the very beginning, I found the oldest painting that I did was done in 1939 uh -huh. in Georgia, South Georgia. I was born, and you will hear a little Georgia accent coming up every once in a while, that uh, I, uh, I worked hard to try and get rid of it because I was a radio announcer for a number of years. So those people that are associated and, uh, with the, the Fine Arts Center and know the history of this community know who Boardman Robinson was. Tell us a little bit about him. What kind of a man was he? Well, it's because of, of uh, Lamar, who had studied with him in New York, that, and Robinson was such a magnificent draftsman, he drew well. Uh, people can argue all they, they want to concerning his paintings, because his paintings were strongly influenced by the French Impressionists, but his drawings and the influences of uh, of Daumier and, and uh, the strength of, of his drawing is what drew me, uh -huh. <laughs> me to him and l made Lamar understand that he was the man for me, that, uh -huh. that uh, I could learn how to draw even more. Yeah, uh, better if I studied with you. What so kind of a relationship did you have with Boardman? Was he a student teacher, and oh, then eventually you? My goodness, yeah, I, I was. Uh, I fairly quickly. I, I came out on scholarship, fellowship, I guess we'd call it these days, and uh, 
was his assistant in the drawing classes, and eventually, after his uh, after his death, I uh, I did I taught life drawing in the classes that he had taught there uh -huh. in life drawing, and I was very proud of that because he had chosen me to be substitute for him when he was ill, and the relationship I can only say it was it was father and son. It's uh, you spent a lot of time at the the uh, Fine Arts Center as a teacher. That's right. And then it's you got involved in. Or got, developed an interest in filmmaking. How did that get started? Well, it really started in Mexico because I was on a sabbatical. I had been there seven years, and I, I took. I asked if we did the sabbatical thing the way that uh, since we were associated with Colorado College, they actually uh, called us uh, assistant professors. I mean, in because we taught classes for CC, uh -huh. and uh, so I went off on sabbatical to uh, Mexico. And while I was there, uh, a man sold me a Russian copy of a Leica. Well, that so kind of brings me to how we met, mm -hmm. is you had uh, gone down to the Alexander uh, Film and Video Company to transfer some old films. Mm -hmm. And they showed me this wonderful film made in the 50s of the uh, original Colorado Springs Public Library, yeah. of the Carnegie Building, which we're now restoring. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, showed the original building how it was and uh, everything that uh, uh, you know before we had Penrose Library and the East Library mm -hmm. here and, and it's it's such a wonderful time capsule of what it was like in the 50s. Well, gee, I thank you very much for saying it was wonderful if you threw that in. Time capsule, <laughs> yes. The, uh, I was learning my trade at that time because I would shoot f as freelance things, uh -huh. uh, have an idea and uh, make some sort of a, a script for it, an idea of plotting it out. And usually I was pretty good at storyboarding because that's the way I'd plan my films because as an artist, you uh -huh. see, it's, it's nice to do a little frame here and a little frame here and the first thing you know, you've made a, a film on paper. Well, I mean, you could tell that visually well planned out, you focus on art, mm -hmm. uh, it's well lit. I mean, it really is, uh, you know, from the standpoint of filmmaking, yeah. you can tell that someone had planned it out. Well, I had, I had worked for uh, the KRDO uh, as a freelance uh, filmmaker for them. Uh -huh. The um, Shell Singer, who was one of the smartest, sharpest announcers I have ever known in my life, he and I worked together on the, uh, the first graduation of the Air Force Academy. Uh -huh. And me with the camera and Shell making notes for his commentary. And uh, at the end of the day, and wow, what a day it was, shipped the, uh, the film by bus, I think it was. I don't think anybody took it up there to, uh, maybe they did, because it was, it was ready to show that night. Uh -huh. And, uh, Sh and Shell uh, narrated it. Uh, for the first time he had seen it. I mean, I, I had, uh, as, as I had cut the film, and of course, uh, the, uh, he had a chance to look at it. Of course, the director for this program, Bob Fitzmorris, mm -hmm. uh, spent 20 years at Cardio and worked yes. with you on, on several projects. Right. But let me, let me go ahead, and I, okay. I want to show some clips of the uh, program you did on the Colorado Springs Public Library, mm -hmm. plus another show you did on, on rocketry. Mm -hmm. Teenage was, Rocket Experiment. Which was about the same time. Tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about that, and then we'll go ahead and show our audience uh, clips of both those programs. Well, it, was, it started because we had a wonderful man, and he, he ran for office, too, and I'm trying to think of his name, and I'm sorry that I, I, I forget it. But uh, he was interested, his, he had some children, and he himself was interested in legalizing teenage rocket experiments in Colorado Springs. Uh -huh. And uh, the, there was the city council, they weren't, that he was on the city council. And uh, maybe his name will come to me. But of course, this is during the Cold War and all the interest in mm -hmm. uh, uh, competition with the Soviet Union and kids right. learning about rocketry and uh, uh, you know just on the verge of the space race. But uh, it's true. It's an uh, exciting time. And the, what the kids. It was a substitute, I thought, for hot rodding and things like this. It was very closely uh, related, but this was a safer sport, I thought. And uh, I had the help, too, in planning this. Uh, 
verbally, I mean, he didn't do any of the adding or writing or whatnot, but uh, was closely associated with, with talking with me about it, was Bob Heinlein, uh -huh. who lived here at the time. And those of you who don't know, Robert Heinlein is one of the premier science fiction writers uh, in this country, lived Correct. in Colorado Springs, lived in the Broadmoor area, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know, a wonderful, wonderful man writer. To, yeah. to have as a, as a friend and to sort of coach me on it. But I won't go into the details of our severance, but at any rate, Bob but left Colorado Springs, and it was it was sad. We lost a good man when he did. He went on his way. But anyway, both these films, I think, are wonderful. Like I said, a wonderful time capsule of what it was like mm -hmm. in the 50s in Colorado Springs. Unfortunately, we do not have the soundtracks, but we've uh, added some music. Wonderful. And uh, mm -hmm. our audience, to go ahead and enjoy uh, clips from uh, two films by uh, Lou Tilly. Well, good. Thank you.
This is a meeting of the Rocket Advisory Council of the Pikes Peak region. It's a group of men and young men joined together to try and promote the rocket experimentation in this area on a safe basis. The immediate problem with which these men are faced today is the location and availability of a suitable proving ground or a firing range for rockets. There is a problem concerning the firing of rockets in the city. Lieutenant Davis here on my left of the city police department. Uh, can you fire a rocket today in Colorado Springs? Okay. Under existing city ordinances at this time it is not permissible to fire rockets of this type within the city limits. And from Colonel Arthur Powers the Chief of Interceptor Missile Division of ADC. Colonel Powers, can the community expect any help from Air Force personnel in this problem? Well, uh, regarding the uh, Air Force participation in the program for young people to gain this scientific and technical knowledge in the rocket and missile field, uh, the Air Force personnel may participate to the extent of attending uh, rocketry advisory council meetings and to offer technical assistance and advice uh, in the rocket and missile field. Uh, it is believed that the emphasis on gaining scientific and technical knowledge relating to rockets and missiles should be primarily channeled towards the uh, important aspects of uh, the theory and design of, uh, of the rockets and missiles. Mm -hmm. Now, at the present time, rockets can be fired safely if under the correct controls. I know they can be. Mm -hmm. There's no question in my mind about safe firing of rockets. And that's one of the problems is education of the public, of the parents, to make them realize that it, all rocketry is not dangerous as such. That it is possible to fire rockets, but all rocket firing should be controlled. Mm -hmm. And this council is doing what to help that control? We're trying to publicize the problem. We're collecting information and data, teachers everywhere we can, in an attempt to get that information to adult responsible people who will disseminate it to the children in rocket clubs, which they form themselves. Well, now, Hugh Pittock, over here, you're uh, one man who's, uh, who's going to be flying these, these rockets, who's going to be shooting, firing, shooting off his firings, rather. Uh, do you have a rocket all ready to go? Well, I have uh, several rockets, small rockets, excepting the fuel, that are ready to go. Mm -hmm. We never put our fuel in until the last minute before firing, because mm -hmm. it's liable to go off at any time. Mm -hmm. It cannot be controlled and by, any way, by any means that I know of now. Once you put the fuel in? Yes. All you can do is take safety precautions and hope it doesn't go off. Mm -hmm. Well, now, are you going to fire those rockets whether they find a firing ground or not? Well, um, that just depends on whether we can find some place maybe safe enough to fire them. We maybe shouldn't. I doubt that we will. Mm -hmm. Well, now, I have a feeling which Mr. Pittock here has expressed, which I think is indicative of the youth of America, and that is that if we can't make it safe for them, they'll make it safe for themselves. But... I
Hi, welcome back. I'm Steve Antonuccio with the Video Center with a special edition of Colorado Springs The Way It Was. And we've been watching uh, some of the 16 millimeter films produced by my guest, Lou Tilly. Yep. And uh, we do have another film that we want to show you that I know you're very proud of. It's an early animation you produced in the 1950s. Tell us a little bit about this uh, film. Well, it's uh, cut paper animation, which is a lot of fun because uh -huh. you cut the things and move shift them around with stop action of the paper and it's of uh, William Blake's uh, poem Tiger Tiger burning bright in the forest of the night and narrated uh, as a piece of poetry by uh, Macmillan that was the head of the uh, drama department at Colorado College at the time uh, I was very pleased that uh, the director of a Polish film school of the National Polish Film School uh, was visiting here and saw it and took with him a copy to go show his students back in Poland. Animation is a lot of work and takes a lot of patience. I know that the times that I've tried it, you know, it's been very difficult. But uh, um, how long did it take you to produce this? Uh? Uh, maybe a month or so. I mean, you know, working off and on on uh -huh. it. it. It is a lot of work, but uh, it was such an exciting thing. I had been working also on a mural at Colorado College which is lost. I, I, I wish somebody would find it. It was taken down, uh -huh. unfortunately, for with a minimist. You know how minimal artists are. <laughs> they just want blank walls with a few clouds on them. <laughs> but uh, so it was a fascinating uh, project, and that's why I, I worked on it, this film, as well. All right, well, let's take a look at an animation by Lou Tilly. Tiger. Tiger burning bright in the forest of the night. What immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? In what distant deeps or skies burnt the fire of thine eyes? On what wings dare he aspire? What the hand dare seize the fire? And what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart when thy heart began to beat? What dread hand forged thy dread feet? What the hammer, what the chain, in what furnace was thy brain? What the anvil, what dread grasp dared its deadly terrors clasp? When the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with made the lamb make thee? Tiger, tiger burning bright in the forest of the night, what immortal hand or eye dare frame thy fearful symmetry? Hi, and welcome back to this special edition of Colorado Springs The Way It Was. Um, this next segment with uh, my guest Lou Tilly, we want to talk a little bit about your uh, photography career. Ah. And one thing that you brought with you that uh, I'm delighted because uh, I consider Fannie Mae Duncan a friend of mine. We produced a documentary on her about uh, seven or eight years ago uh, called Everybody Welcome. Mm -hmm. But you did a photo essay of Fannie Mae Duncan. It was a day in the life kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Tell us a little bit about how that got started. and. Uh, Johnny uh, Rubens, who was uh, an ex-lawyer and decided he'd uh, be a freelance writer, uh -huh. uh, thought she'd make a damn good story, and uh, I was the cameraman, and so he did the research on her and uh, accompanied me and made all the notes and things, and I was free to uh, do what an artist does when he takes pictures, that uh -huh. is to take pictures that sort of reveal the personality visually. Uh -huh. And this was, was this published in a magazine then, or? You know, I, when I brought these over, I, I don't know. I really don't, I, uh, because I lost track of, of where things were and how they, they, they were published. 
But I don't think so. I don't think we ever found a publisher uh -huh. uh, that was interested in that much detail for what who was uh, a big fish in a small pond, but not big enough to go national. Let's put it that way. But in terms of Colorado Springs history, Fannie Mae Duncan, of course, was a businesswoman here in town. Absolutely. She owned the, owned the Cotton Club. Mm -hmm. And this was around 1955 when mm -hmm. you did this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, again, it's a wonderful time capsule of that, that era in the 50s. But uh, uh, what, what did you do? You just got up and followed her followed through a course through of day. Followed her through a day's work from the beginning with, uh, to the very end, the, uh, which included, at the time, she was uh, trying to set up a black uh, resort uh, hotel uh -huh. in Manitou Springs. And this was a fascinating story. And uh, unfortunately, the times were not quite right for it. And I don't know if she lost money or that, but we followed that. As uh, at the beginning, went out and saw the property that she was hoping to set up, and then returned uh, through the day and finished up at night. That was the exciting part because uh, the Cotton Club uh, was featuring a, a special band that was in, uh -huh. and uh, the Fannie Mae was was as marvelous with it. Well, all I can say is, um, looking through the proof sheets, these are brilliant photos. I mean, I, I can't say a, I've seen a nicer photo essay from that time period. Oh, but let's go ahead and uh, show some of the pictures. This is a print that Myron Wood did for you, right? Actually made. Uh -huh. he let's was go the ahead and hold maker. it up for... Uh, uh -huh. That would uh, yeah, we'll keep on this the glare camera, down. Yeah, no, on Dave's one? camera okay, there. Okay, there we go. Uh, now, this is when Fannie Mae was in her prime, probably a young woman in her mid-30s at that time. with a wonderful family. She and her husband. All of the members of the family were cooperative in, uh, in running the Cotton Club. And uh, that one, as uh, Myron did a, uh, a photo show once in the Arts Center and wanted, he felt, he thought his, his prints, and they were a hell of a lot better than my printing skills, <laughs> and he did them. But these were... Um, uh, some smaller ones here, but nevertheless, what what is the size of a, a photograph? What I like about that one is is uh, I don't know if you can get that, Dave. Is anyway that... doing doing a uh, we'll cut these in later, but uh... here she is at the end of the evening, in which her. Uh, She's looking on her receipts, counting and her money, how, counting her money. Very successful businesswoman, and uh, Fannie Mae knew how to run a business, and a very careful one too. Yeah, you I love this on picture. This one, this one as is she great. counts her money. Notice that revolver right by her side. She knows how to protect herself. She protected <laughs> herself beautifully. She was a marvelous. Well, is a marvelous she woman. She is. I haven't still seen alive. her in so long. She's still alive. Lives in, in Denver. Denver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I talk to her on occasion, and uh, you know, these are just a few of these photographs. Uh, mm -hmm. And eventually, I'd love to get these printed and, and do a photo display. Oh, but that would uh, be good. But there must be at least. 50 or 100 of these photographs that you have from that yes. uh, day that would make some beautiful prints. Y yes. Uh, the, you know, we have a wonderful photo curator out at uh, at University of Colorado in Colorado Springs. Uh -huh. He is uh, the director of their art center. Is uh, Really, his specialty is photography. Uh -huh. And uh, we're, I'll talk with him about that, too. Well, I'm just saying, uh, it's, you know, working on this project has mm -hmm. been delightful, just discovering mm -hmm. these films and photographs. Mm -hmm. But, you know, what a blessing to have people like yourself with the vision to photograph things at the time. Because you don't think about it. You know, when you're <laughs> in your, that time period, you don't think, well, how's yeah. it going to have any value? You know, yeah. but, uh, but it really does. You know, 40 years from now, a hundred years from now, you know, they just become uh, more priceless. Yeah, there are literally thousands of negatives that I have in my files, and uh, it's amazing to go back and see. Of course, I was really documenting my life in in a way because right. all of these were people I knew and uh, enjoyed taking photographs of them. How is it was jumping back from photography to painting to filmmaking? You know, how do you keep track? You know, we're living such a creative life, and uh, I <laughs> mean, uh, was it ever that difficult to go back from one to the other? And, and how did you have the time to do it? Now that's <laughs> that's that's a difficult question because I never if you don't if you don't have the time you do it anyway. I mean I I, I think it's uh, my whole life has been devoted to expressing ideas visually, and uh, I've never painted a picture that didn't have 
some kind of meaning to it. I think it's there's nothing any duller than than paintings that don't say anything. Uh -huh. And uh, I found that photography it was the same way. I mean, you you can let them speak your message, and uh, I hope my photographs do that. They and, do beautifully. And I hope that uh, my paintings do it as uh, as well. And. Uh, Always do a painting that has meaning. Now, you spent 10 years working for the Alexander Film Company. A little less than that, but were you, almost. Were you still teaching at the Fine Arts Center at that time? No, I, uh, I, I taught uh, a few classes, night classes and things like this, uh, during that period. But essentially, I was away from painting for about uh, seven years, I think, eight years. And of course, the Alexander yeah. Film Company at one time was the largest employer in Colorado Springs. They mm -hmm. had about 700 to 1,000 employees. And uh, they, one of the reasons why we have such a rich resource of, of films for this series. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the Alexander Film Company like when you were there? It was in the 50s, uh, late 50s to early 60s? It was changing over. It was a time, and I think one reason I was, was hired the uh, it was essentially a film advertising company mm -hmm. in other words the on the theater screens when you sent people out to get popcorn and things right. like that and uh, the coming attractions the uh, the ads for the companies and television was coming in and that was made the big difference because we could not only do a uh, theater screen ad for a company, for the big companies, for, for General Motors, for uh, Chevrolets, for uh, all of well, Chrysler products as well. And uh, the television could be cut from the same footage that the theater screen had, and that was a pretty good deal for it. And uh -huh. that's one reason, I'm, as I say, I progressed fairly quickly from uh, a writer. I was first hired as a writer. Uh -huh. And uh, here we have another another skill, writing. <laughs> I've got, we haven't mentioned that yet. But, uh. No. <laughs> well, that's that's something which I, I still am. And how can I put this? I've been able to sell articles very easily, uh -huh. but I have never sold the kind of fiction I would like to sell. Uh -huh. But uh, so that's still in the future. Completing. Of course, you see, I'm working on at least three novels, but <laughs> completing a novel is very difficult for me to do. Now, is it, was the Alexander f family still involved with the company when you started? Yeah, they were, uh -huh. st they were still there, and you knew you could always get in <laughs> a script if it had babies in it or dogs. Uh -huh. <laughs> they, <laughs> they liked that. Oh, they liked that. The, they, they were the, was the, it the DM Alexander part. was running the company at the time? Or? Yeah. Yeah. It was transferring over to the, the gentleman who came to straighten out the finances, and uh -huh. he helped them out. Uh, there's an old joke that way about a fellow helping out his boyfriend, you know, from his girlfriend, I'll help you out with it. Yes, he helped them out. He helped them completely out. <laughs> out of business, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, that was a, a wonderful period. Uh -huh. and, and well, and the, uh, the, what's left of the Alexander Film Company, the new owners, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Regina and Andy Hutchinson, uh, are uh, underwriting mm -hmm. this project. Wonderful and have people. A, have a great business mm -hmm. uh, out of Garden of the Gods, and uh, they uh, have revived uh, the Alexander Film and Video Company. So uh, it's good to see them still here in town. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Carrying it on. Well, let's talk a little bit about what you're working on now. You've been, you know, a lot of people who, of your generation, even of my generation, have a phobia for technology, learning computers, but uh, that isn't the case with you. You've uh, kind of uh, got involved with computers and well, have done uh, computer art. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll lean back on that one because I have to be careful and, and not, uh, I'm so excited still about it. I, it's, 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 uh, it has now, I've married my interest in photography. I carry a camcorder with me at all times when uh -huh. I travel. And I travel at least, I would say, half of the time. And Europe, and, and uh, especially, and, and uh, throughout, uh, well, Australia, going on a world cruise next year. I love to shoot a camcorder and use it as only an artist would. I'm, I'm really looking forward to a series of short, uh, of short, well, no more than two minute, three minute 
uh, images uh -huh. of gleaned from the literally the hours of footage that I have. So uh -huh. I spend a good deal of time on the computer editing these uh, films that I have made. And I don't know when it will be a commercial product or if it will ever be, but certainly I would like somehow to, to um, have these seen. It's, uh -huh. it's hard to... Yeah, which we can do here. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you need a place, just let us know. We'd be glad to show you. Well, I've, uh, I, I will soon have, have some that I think will be usable. A couple of things I forgot to ask you about, mm -hmm. but you were a friend of Julie Penrose, of course, who uh, um, financed uh, the Fine Arts Center and the activities mm -hmm. at the art school there. Um, Tell us a little bit about Julie Penrose. What was she like? Well, let me introduce you to Jean Charlot first, because at the University of Georgia, I studied with Charlot. Uh -huh. And when the art center had lost Boardman Robinson, he died, we had to go back east and died, and uh, they needed a new director for the art school. And uh, I went together with a wonderful man who, had, who was a Mexican expert, Sid Stallings, we both recommended Jean Charlot, who uh -huh. was uh, very important in the Mexican uh, mural revolution. And I had worked with him at the University of Georgia, was a good student of his. And by gosh, we got him elected as uh, the head of the art center. Uh -huh. Now, how does this fit in with Julie Penrose? Charlot was a good Catholic uh -huh. and one who uh, was represented with many pictures in the Vatican. I have gone there to see them. And uh, he made good friends with Julie's priest, favorite tree, a uh -huh. handsome young man from the local, from El Paso County. And uh, so this gave me an opportunity to know, we called her Julie, she liked being called Julie. Not very formal. Yeah. Uh, not, yeah. she's very informal and a very lovely person. Uh -huh. And so I, on several occasions, uh, shared uh, a nice feast prepared by the Charlots, in uh -huh. which uh, Mrs. Penrose, I would refer to her a little more formally now <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> than then, but uh, she was a nice lady. Obviously, she loved the arts. Uh, she did indeed. What do you think? What, 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 what was it about her that do you think gave her such an interest in the arts and uh, the willingness to support it? I mean, was she an artist herself or she just recognized the... Uh, no, I think she recognized the value of it uh -huh. and with the scheme of things. It's, uh, uh, at that time in Colorado Springs, we had a, a very large group of people who were associated with the Fine Arts Center. Uh -huh. And those people had a great deal of money, and they did not mind spending it on art. Mm -hmm. And they felt this was a proper way to, uh, uh, to bring culture with it. <laughs> to, there's an old Dwight Fisk uh, thing about bringing culture to Buffalo. To the well, West, yeah. To bringing culture <laughs> to the West, and yeah. that's what they did. Uh -huh. and it was a fine thing, a noble thing to do. And of course, uh, the legacy of artists that she brought into town, you know, their work, uh, still at the Fine Arts Center and that continues uh, through uh, several young artists that have made their home in Colorado Springs. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple things I want to talk about before we get done, but your family, you have two daughters and uh, your one daughter is head of, of the Arts Council. Yes, she is. That's Eve. She is an, not only an actress, but a, a wonderful director and a good uh, producer of, uh, of theater. Uh -huh. And this has been her direction, which is very nice. My other daughter is uh, a sculptress and a jewelry maker, and she lives uh, in Georgia and uh, has done uh, marvelous things in terms of found objects and making comments on our society with them and had some success with this. And then don't forget my grandchildren, ah. which I just, we, we've got Luigi, I call him Luigi because he spent <laughs> one, uh, one uh, semester with me. I was an artist in residence with the University of Georgia's program in Cortona uh -huh. in Italia. 
as in Toscano, and a uh, wonderful experience he had there. So ever since, he was 12 years old then, and uh, really loved it. And so it was three marvelous. generations of artists. Uh, yeah, we're right art, through it, yeah. because the uh, number two of those grandsons is of Eve's, uh, is such a talented young man in the field of all thing of gymnastics and uh, a clown. He's, uh -huh. he's, uh, he really has been a, a street uh, clown in, uh, in um, Seattle and now he's teaching uh, gymnastics there. So, And the third one is Michael and Michael just gets along fine because He's the, the sneakiest one of all. He's, he's, he hasn't quite been able to focus on what he's going to be, but I'm sure it's going to be good. When you look back at a career of 60 years uh, creating things in all kinds of formats, uh, um, what, do you, uh, what do you think fondly of the most? Is there anything in your career that, uh, that stands out? Or? Well, since it was very recent, it was on my 77th birthday, May the 17th of this year, a wonderful man by the name of Rich, who has Rich's designs in a wonderful gallery down south of town, gave me a retrospective exhibition. And to walk into his gallery and see 120 pieces of my art displayed beautifully by him. He arranged them. He, it couldn't have been better done. Uh -huh. That was, for me, it had to be the crowning glory of my career as a painter. Now, these were just paintings. Right. I mean, this, I mean the, career, the, the yeah. other things, um, well, I guess as a way, other things financed <laughs> my career as a painter. Uh -huh. I have never had to paint schlock. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I, I have commercially. Yeah. I have only done paintings in order to get an idea across uh -huh. uh, in paint. Now, photographs, I didn't mind if I had to do schlock with them. Uh -huh. Films, my God, Alexander, film, you ten have to call yeah. 10 years of commercials. Yeah. And uh, done well and technically well and enjoyably. Uh -huh. But that was to make money, I, I, will, I will say uh -huh. it. And uh, but pay the bills. Painting, yeah. painting is has been an obsession and still is. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I think what I told you. Here I'm now. I'm rambling on here, but uh, one reason that uh, I must finish it up is that I have to go work on a a mural for the Italian community down in Pueblo, and so I'm just as excited. I think I got this from Robinson. It's that when I'm going to do a painting, I'm going to do something I have never done before. Uh -huh. Every painting is if I've, I've never painted before. I'm just, I look at that blank canvas and I say, oh boy, wonderful. <laughs> it's, I mean, here is a chance to do something that I've never done before. And you've obviously never lost your enthusiasm. No, I no, and I'm, I'm eager to get it. And it's to, not easy. A creative career is not, it's difficult no, times to you know, come up with something new and inventive. Oh, they're, they're wonderful. And as, as you mentioned, the, uh, the new techniques to be able to use that camcorder uh -huh. and then to edit those images and then to mix in titles and then drawings that I have made and the pictures that I have painted of those places. It's, it's a game. The, it was um, an Italian uh, philosopher, I always forget names at this point, but said that that is what art is. It is man's highest form of play. And that's what it is. That's all it is. It's a game. And it's a wonderful game, and I, I've played it all of my life. I loved it. Says it very well. <laughs> I want to I want to thank you for uh, spending this time with us and, mm -hmm. and sharing your your art and your enthusiasm for art. And we look forward to featuring uh, more of your work in uh, future films and uh, wow. and uh, photographs. I but, uh, thank you for having discovered my my films and all the things that that you have found, which I had forgotten a lot of them had happened, and there they are still still in existence. And thank you very much. Well, thank you, and thank you for joining us for this special edition of Colorado Springs the way it was. Isn't it odd to walk up to a dream and say, don't I know you? Isn't it weird to hear miracles talk and say, well, how do you 
do Clear is your mind and strong is your will A mountain is simple to show Then the ground falls apart, boom goes your apple cart Isn't that just like love? Colorado Springs the way it was is a program produced by the Pikes Peak Library District that looks back at the history of this region through old films. If you have an older film that features the history of this area you would like shown on Channel 17, please call 531-6333, extension 1170. Isn't that just like love, isn't it just?